Hey, I'm Morgan Crook from Fintech Technology. We are well known for our electronic transformers, and um, certainly these days electronic transformers are dominant in the industry. Sell so far more of those than magnetics going in, in modern science these days. But there are a lot of good reasons to be using magnetics, which we've been selling for a really long time and have continued to make updates on to improve their performance. Pretty much any time that you can use a magnetic transformer, you should be considering doing that. With magnetics, you can use GTO and conduit. You can't with electronic. Uh, with magnetics, there's a you have pretty broad range of how much GTO you can use. With electronics, you're not supposed to extend the GTO any further than it comes with originally. With these, it's no trouble having um, these in transformer boxes. Can't with magnetics. With um, and with these, you can put multiple magnetics in a sign cabinet without issue, and it can often cause troubles when you're using electronic transformers. Not just ours, mind you, but anybody's electronics. Now, everybody keeps saying that all of their products are the best. Um, you may have heard us say that, too. But what I'd like to do today is go through and show you what the differences are. Once you see what's inside these things, see some of the differences in construction, both inside and outside the transformer, I think you'll be very happy about um, um, building some confidence in what Vintex brings to the market. To start with, let's take a look at the outside of these. Pretty much close to the same size. Ours is probably a little bit bigger. Heights are about the same on all of them. If you look around on all of them, primaries on one end, secondaries on opposite ends on all these. On all these, there's some kind of switch to override the ground fault circuitry in there to make it easy for um, testing if there's a problem about something granted out in the transformer itself. What you'll notice on ours, however, is that on this primaries over here, uh, service ground here, on this end of the transformer, besides having the ground fault uh, override button and so forth, uh, we also have this lug on ours, and this is a midpoint return lug. Because of how we build our transformers, even with 2161, even with the ground fault transformers, because of the construction we have inside here, we can have a return lug on ours. And the difference there is if you're doing service on something that has been originally midpoint wired in a midpoint ground method. This lets you, rather than originally, it went out from here through the neon and came back to the service ground. Now all you have to do is bring that end over here to the return lug on it. If you're working with some one of these other transformers, you're looking at rewiring a significant portion of the sign. So this, when you're doing service work in the field, can end up saving you a lot of time. Now, what we'll do first, take the lids off these things, look inside, see what differences we can see there, and then we'll move on from that. Hey, we're back after deconstructing these three transformers. Um, on this one, cut the sides off here, uh, put it on a gas grill upside down, melted the tar out. We put some, then uh, soaked it in gasoline for a while, used some engine cleaner on it, and it came out this nice. So you can see, get a really good idea of what's inside. On these other two, both of them with epoxy inside, cut the sides off, uh, got a nice big ball peen hammer and just wailed on it for several hours, That both that one and this one too. Okay, so overall, let's look at the main part to the construction here. These two are built in a similar way in that primary coils right here, secondary and secondary. This one, primary coil, secondary and secondary. On the Vintex, we build ours differently, and in the traditional way, which most people would have, well, certainly accepted as being best in the past. We believe it certainly still is. Primary coil in the middle, secondary coils on the outside. When power is induced in both sides, this is why it ends up being equal on both of the terminals coming out. We believe that it runs cooler being this way, since the same amount of power is being induced into both of them. Both coils are worked the same amount. They're putting out the same amount of effort. A little bit different here there, um, in terms of the power that's induced in the first one versus the second one on these. Now, if you look at the coil, the outside of dimensions on this, this is about six inches long. Here, we're at about seven inches. On the Vintex, a little more than that. Um, but you can look and see the size of the primaries here versus here versus here. Much, much bigger here. We're looking at... 30% more materials inside this thing, which means 
the materials that are in here are sort of doing less work to make the same amount of power. They're under less stress. It's one of the things we think works, makes this work so well. In here you see the uh, cardboard that was segregating the, um, the ground fault module from the rest of it. There was a piece of mylar in the bottom and there was mica on one side of it. Um, you see, you can, in this second one, there was mica all the way around it. You'll notice, however, this is a, is a two-part potting, potting process. The cores and coils are potted with a, uh, under vacuum. You can see how the, the, the um, epoxy is pulled up nice and tight on here. Okay? With the Ventex, it's a three-part process. The cores and coils are potted under vacuum. You can see how, like right through here, where the, um, the epoxy without any aggregate in it is pulled up right against the coils. There's no air gaps in there. Our second potting process, and you see all the way around it, there's mica there around each of the coils individually. Um, there was, there's mica here on the bottom of it. There's mica on both sides of it too. So it's very well insulated from the case. Uh, the second potting process is not done in a vacuum, but it's done same epoxy but with an aggregate in it. Um, makes it strong like putting rocks in concrete to make that stronger. So if it gets a hit to the outside, it doesn't just fracture it. Um, and then you see this top potting, which is both makes it look pretty um, if somebody's taking the lid off, which they weren't supposed to. Um, also, it's a more waterproof um, material than the rest of this is. So if water or condensation gets in the top, it won't be drawn down into the cores and coils on it. Okay. Um, but the other main thing that we should be looking at here is what is it made out of? You can see here, you can see the primary and secondaries here. So to look and see what's inside. You can see the tape that's around here. It's holding together copper windings in here on the primaries and the secondaries. But again, you can see how just how small the primaries and secondaries are on these. We take a look inside. And we see on the secondaries that it is copper windings here, but on the primary, this is aluminum windings here. Doesn't have nearly the um, um, energy carrying capacity that copper does. On the last Ventex, You can see on here, both copper on the primaries and secondaries. So that's what's inside of each of those. You can see from, so that you can see that all transformers aren't built the same. We spend a lot more money building ours. We end up charging approximately the same thing. But there's a lot more materials in here. Copper windings throughout the whole thing. Uh, Multi-part potting process. Mica around everything for insulation. Um, and just generally, we believe that this is a better way to build a transformer. And now that you've seen inside and seen what the difference is, we hope you'll consider buying Vintex transformers. Thank you.